Hey guys, Joe here. I uh, haven't made a video in a while, so I thought I'd, uh, I'd help clear up some stuff, if possible, uh, with regards to the triangle exposure in cameras, which is aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. I wanted to go through and explain what those things do, what you would use them for, and why, in my opinion, you should be using aperture or shutter priority mode on your camera and how that can help you. Um, obviously you can use whatever you want, but this is aimed more at beginners or people wanting to kind of learn as much as they can quickly. What is ISO? What does it do? ISO, from the way that I think of it, is kind of like a volume knob, okay? So think of it like the more you turn it up, the louder something's going to get, i.e. the brighter the image is going to get. But if you turn it up too much, you're going to start getting distortion from the speakers and you're going to lose clarity. In terms of pictures, the more you turn it up, the brighter it gets. But the noisier and grainier it gets, there's less clarity to the picture. It's not as clean as us photographers like to say. When I say usable amount, I mean you kind of got like a usable amount of 100 to around, what have I written down here? 100 to 800. So all that means is if you start going above an ISO of 800, you're going to start getting some, some grain in those images. Different for every camera, different for every situation, but generally speaking, you want to kind of keep it below 800 if you can, from my own experience, but it's also just an opinion. The range here is much greater. Um, I've written down here uh, from 50 to 3200. So all that means is you can pretty much get the same amount of grain slash noise on a full frame at much higher like ISOs than you can on the other ones. Why would you want to use a high ISO? Say you're um, outside at night time and there's lots of kind of fairy lights around and you're taking pictures of friends sat at the table having a few beers or say you're inside a sports hall uh, taking pictures of, I don't know what this is, it's like a chicken arm, I don't know why I did that. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, say you're inside a sports hall taking pictures of, you know, basketball or whatever, you know, situations where there's not much light, um, for a camera at least, you want to bump the ISO up so that the camera can see information so it can give you an exposed image. What is an exposed image? Something which is bright enough for you to see it, essentially. That's the easiest way of explaining it. SOOC is basically straight out of camera. All that means is it hasn't been put into Photoshop or anything else. It's literally just, this is the picture I took on my camera. This is what it looks like. That's what SOOC stands for. Then you have uh, noise reduction. Noise reduction is, you imagine you turned your ISO up really high. Uh, so you've got all of these kind of weird specks all over the image. I'll, I'll put some examples up. Um, what noise reduction would be is you'd see that noise and you'd reduce it and you'd take it away. The only downside to that is Yes, it cleans the image up, but the downside is it also makes it look softer, not sharp. Uh, and the last one was post-processing. What it means is processing is, um, say you have an image and you put it into Photoshop and you change the contrast or you change the colors or you make it black and white or you sharpen something, whatever, that's processing an image. All post means is after you've taken the picture, that's post. If taking the picture is now, and before you've taken the picture is pre, then post is when you've taken the picture, every, anything you do from it from this point onwards, that's post. So post production or post processing, all that means is you've taken the picture, now you're editing it. Simple. Aperture, what is it? Aperture is essentially how much do you want in focus. So the lower the number, the shallower the focus, the higher the number, the deeper the focus. What the hell do I mean by that? Very simple. What I mean is, if for example, you wanted to take a picture from where you were stood and there was a mountain range in the distance, you want to capture everything. Think of it like this, okay? The camera's here and you're facing this way and the mountain range is over here. You want all of this to be in focus, therefore you want a high aperture because you want to have all of it in focus. If, for example, you wanted to take a picture of someone's face where the only thing you wanted in focus was their eyes and you wanted the background to be really blurry, 
you'd have a really low aperture because you only want a small amount to be in focus. That's what I mean by that. Okay, so examples of low apertures, 1.2, 1.4, 1.8, 2.8, 2, things like that. Um, high would be 11, 12, um, 22, 16, stuff like that. What does aperture affect? Just like ISO, it affects brightness. And what I mean by that is a lower aperture, because um, if you imagine a lens is like this, um, when a lens looks like this, it lets in lots of light and it focuses on a very shallow amount. So that means you could focus on the tip of my nose and everything else would go blurry, okay? That's what would happen when the lens is like this. When you stop the aperture down, you, you close the lens like this and it gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And when the lens is like this, logically less light is allowed to get in. So the image gets darker. So it's kind of odd to think about it. So rather than thinking of it like a lower number lets in more light, I like to think of it as, um, because obviously if you're talking bigger, most people attribute positive, bigger, climbing, larger, brightness, more light, things like that. So whereas when you kind of think of aperture, it's like lower number equals brighter, which can get confusing. I like to think of it as how much is the lens open? So what I mean by that is the more a lens is open, which just happens to be a lower aperture, the more it's open, the more light gets in. The more you close it, um, a higher aperture, think of it like you're closing it more, the less light gets in. So that's how it affects brightness there. The last one is shutter speed. What do we use shutter speed for? What is it? It's kind of like the full stop at the end of a sentence in a camera. So what I mean by that is a camera will just, all its job is, hey, I'm a sensor, light hit me, and I will register it. Until something goes, or something goes, stop, it's gonna keep registering light. So what that means is, if you have a fast shutter speed, like really, 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 really fast, so we're talking like, say, one slash four thousand. That's like one four thousandth of a second. Like, what, can you even comprehend that? One four thousandth of a second. <laughs> so when you have that, what that means is the shutter, if this is your lens, the shutter goes bang so quick. That's kind of like a full stop. So what that means is anything from the second you press the shutter, the time it takes to go from here to here, that's how much light slash information is recorded. And if you say one slash two, so half a second. So if you have a shutter speed of one slash two, that's half a second. Well, that would be is if a second is like one, two, that'd be like one, like that, da dun, da dun. So if you're looking at that as the information, there's a big difference between going bang and da dun. You know what I mean? So, so you want to capture someone juggling and you don't want it to be blurry. You want it to be nice and sharp. Obviously there's movement here. So the shutter has to be faster than the movement that's happening in front of you. How do you know what that is? Just practice. And I'm not sure there's like a, a scientific way that's easily accessible for people to go, well, I can tell that these balls are moving at this speed at this distance, therefore I can use a shutter speed of this to override it. That is technically what you're doing, but it's far easier to just go, take a picture and going, okay, the, the walls are blurry, so I need to raise it more. It's just easier to do that rather than think about all of the physics and stuff behind it, if it's even physics. Probably not physics, is it? So you've got your juggler, and he's juggling his balls, <laughs> and you want to stop the motion. So use a higher shutter speed. Let's try my first port of call, probably be one slash 400, 400th of a second. Um, and he's juggling, I take a picture, and you see what the balls are like. And if they're like blurry, you go, okay, not fast enough, I need to raise it. And then you take another one, bang, it's frozen. And it happens to be, say, one slash one thousandth. So one thousandth of a second has frozen the image that you want. Fantastic. But now, what about when you take a picture of uh, a waterfall? And you don't want to freeze the waterfall. You want it to look like it's just silk or milk, just, just going down. Um, what you do then is you use a slower shutter speed. Why? Well, because the longer a shutter is open, the more information it registers. So if you imagine you have this water here, you don't want to freeze the water here, 
You want to travel, you want to get the information of the water from here all the way down to here. But obviously it's an endless stream. So to make it look really smooth like silk, you open the shutter so it's slower. So it, when you press the shutter, you're capturing the water traveling from here to here before that full stop happens, rather than capturing it before it goes from here to here. Which is like, there's no difference, you know? So lower shutter speed, you get more motion. So you know when you see those pictures where people go to, um, parties and stuff like that and they take a picture and it's just really blurry and everyone's like Whoa! and they're like oh god that's really unusable that's because those cameras don't have enough light in to get into it so the only way you can override that is by leaving the shutter open longer so that more light can get in but by doing that it's registering all of the light where it's moving which is why it doesn't look sharp i hope that makes sense i'm terrible at explaining this stuff <laughs> Okay, so say you want to get pictures that are more movie-like, as in, you know, you focus on someone's face and everything else is blurry behind them, stuff like that. You want to put your camera into aperture priority mode. That can sometimes look like an A or an AV, anything to do with A usually. And what that means is, on your camera, which I don't have because it's there, yeah, if you're holding your camera like this, you've got this dial at the top here where your index finger would naturally fall. And that will control and change the aperture and you're thinking okay well what the hell do I do with my aperture as we said earlier a smaller aperture as in 1.8 1.2 1.4 all of that stuff that focuses on a shallow amount so when you want to get those movie type shots whack it straight down to 1.8 to anything like that just just lower numbers anything lower than say you know 3.5 anything around that you're going to be taking pictures of people and the background is going to blur out real nice and it's going to look like a movie as you like it. If you want to go take pictures of say your back garden or your house because you're selling it or um, you know mountains, landscapes, anything like that, whack the number a bit higher. Say 11, anything from 11 up to 22 and the higher you raise that number the more stuff is going to be in focus. So it's up to you to kind of work out what that number is based on the scene you're in and where you're taking it. And that would be aperture mode. You basically use it for how much do I want in focus. Just think to yourself logically, how much do I want in focus? Do I want a picture of my children stood here and I want to see Disneyland behind them? Put it up pretty high. Do I want to, are my children stood in somewhere where it's really busy and I want them to stand out? Whack it all the way down, 1.8, whatever. So when you take a picture of them, they're in focus, but everything else is kind of blurry, so you focus on them. You have to just use your mind. Uh, Shutter-based priority. That usually shows up as S. Uh, I don't know what the other one is. I don't think it's SV, but it's just S. You, you'll work it up. <laughs> and, you know, shutter uh, priority is essentially think to yourself how much motion do I want in this picture so what that means is if you're seeing someone that you know they're lining up and they're about to take a hit and they swing the bat like this think to yourself do I want to freeze this motion or do I want to see a little bit of the bat moving or um, if there's a waterfall do I want to capture the waterfall going bang it's still that's the water or do I want to capture it going like that it's like silky what is this it's like a curtain it's like end of uh, Wayne Say you want to take a picture of a car driving past you, um, but you want the car to be sharp, but you want the background to be blurred. You're thinking, how do you do that? Because if you put the shutter speed low, when the car drives, you're capturing the motion, therefore the car will look blurry. And if I put the shutter speed high, it's going to freeze the motion, therefore everything's going to be sharp. How does it work? It's quite a clever trick. What you do is you put the shutter speed low, so that you register movement, but as the car would travel past you, you follow the car as you take the picture. Because then what's happening is, you're freezing the motion of the car because you're following it, but the background is still moving. I hope that makes sense. Um, so that's basically the triangle of exposure, which is ISO, which is, as a recap, ISO is kind of grain, noise, um, aperture is how much do you want in focus, and shutter speed is how much motion do I want to convey in the image and all of them do exactly the same job you uh, you turn them up the image uh, gets affected in brightness you turn them down the image gets affected in brightness and the reason I suggest putting the camera into aperture 
or shutter priority is based off of the fact that you don't have to think about balancing that triangle. The camera will do it for you. You know, when you're going out and you want to get a picture, you shouldn't have to think about everything else. Just think about what do I want to capture? And if you want to capture motion, put it into shutter, get the, the shutter speed to where you want it. The camera will do everything else for you. And if you want to take a picture of your friend and you want it to look really artsy and movie-like and cool and separated, take it into aperture mode and focus on the aperture. The camera will do the rest of the triangle for you. Don't worry about it. When people say, oh, well, you know, if you don't use manual, then you're just an amateur. It's just like, manual has its place and you can use it for certain things when the camera doesn't know what you're trying to achieve. For example, say you want to take pictures of fireworks. Putting it into aperture or shutter priority mode isn't really going to work for you without adding more complex things like exposure compensation. So obviously to anyone who knows what that is, it's not difficult, but for someone who's kind of just starting out, it's harder to think about that stuff. So it's easier to just say, hey, if you want to take pictures of fireworks, put it into manual and use that triangle to get the image that you want, as in set the ISO to say 400, the shutter speed to how much motion do you want? Okay, well I want the fireworks to be frozen or do I want them to kind of see the motion? I want them to be frozen. Okay, so let's try um, 1 slash 800, 800th of a second. And then the only thing left is your aperture. So you take a picture and you see how bright it is and then you just adjust the aperture higher or lower to kind of compensate for the brightness. That's just an example where you can build an image yourself in manual where um, the reason I say that is because when you're in aperture or shutter priority the camera will balance the other numbers to create to what it believes to be a perfectly exposed image so obviously nighttime you've got really bright fireworks and pitch black everywhere here it's gonna be impossible for a camera to be able to go I know how to expose this so that's why you would use manual because you're dictating what is in you know what is exposed I hope that makes sense but generally speaking like I pretty much use aperture priority all the time 100% I, I just pretty much never swap to anything else ever um, so I just I don't need to yet so I don't know enjoy it hope that made sense I hope it cleaned some stuff up a little bit and any questions just ask because I want to get better at conveying information to people because the reason I'm doing these videos is I suck at communicating and I love teaching. So <laughs> it's kind of like, I love teaching, but I can't teach. So, <laughs> so these videos are my way of uh, trying to be more concise and helping share information that I've learned along the way. Um, and I hope it's been helpful for you. And yeah, I don't know how to sign off either. You guys should give me some lines on how I should sign off videos, how I should start videos as well. You just do it for me. Yeah, just do it for me. God. Why am I doing this? Just do it for me. <laughs>